Easter weekend, his whole life flashed before him. He heard blood-curdling screams, felt kicks, punches. Then something happened that's nothing short of a miracle. I was scared to death that my life was over and there was no turning back. February 28th, 2008. Mark Nelson was admitted into a Tallahassee, Florida hospital with double pneumonia. But that wasn't the worst news he'd get. He said that I had AIDS. The virus was in my system for, they said, eight to ten years. Now in ICU, Mark began to reflect on his childhood and the decisions he had made in life. Growing up in a church-going middle-class family, he had most everything he needed, except the attention and affection of his dad. I was looking for that connection to a male figure that could give me some affirmation that I was doing something right. He did find a father figure in his youth pastor at church. At 13, Mark was doing his best to stand out and be admired. He did get kind of like arrogant, you know, to some extent and proud. I would actually tell uh, other people that I knew more than them, that I was better than them, that God loved me more than them. Seeing the strife and division Mark was causing, his youth pastor pulled him aside and chastised him. I thought he was rebuking me as a person. And so when I left that youth group that night, I was weeping and just hurt, deeply hurt. Now, instead of spending all his time at church, Mark found another crowd. He started drinking and doing drugs. Then he got into pornography. I had to find other things to really fill that wound. My entire mind uh, was overrun with perverse thoughts. It led me into a very broken world. A broken world that led to a growing attraction to men. Throughout high school, Mark kept his same-sex desires hidden. But in college, he started testing the waters and found acceptance among the homosexual community. Then, after he graduated from college in 2000, he stepped fully into the gay lifestyle. I was, I was getting a lot of male information. I was really, really promiscuous. Uh, all over the place. For seven years, he kept his secret from his parents and co-workers. Then, in February 2008, after several months of being sick, he landed in the hospital with double pneumonia and AIDS. I had a lot of fear about what was going to happen to me. Doctors decided to put Mark into a coma to help his body rest. Meanwhile, Mark's parents got word and came as soon as they could. They discovered their son was not only in a physical battle, but a spiritual one. And when we went into his room that night, and we went over next to him to pray for him, I heard the voice say, we have him, stay away from him. Doctors gave Mark's parents little hope as his health continued to decline. I knew the Lord did miracles, you know, and we started praying right away. I was reading the Bible all the time, and every place I went, I wrote the scriptures down that God gave me, and then I would say them out loud, and I would proclaim them. For the next several weeks, family and friends prayed around the clock. Then on Easter weekend, Mark coded. I started seeing scenes of my life just flashing before my eyes. And I knew that they were all based off my years of living in homosexuality. It went complete darkness again. Slowly, I started hearing these screams and cries for help. And then I started feeling these kicks and these punches, these physical blows to my body. It was overwhelming me, and I, I got to the point where I couldn't really take it anymore. And I, I, I cried out, Jesus. And immediately my soul re-entered my body. I, I just thank God that day with such depth for what he brought me out of. After Mark stabilized, doctors decided to bring him out of his coma. Next day, everyone could see that something had changed. There was a different atmosphere in the room. Every improvement was like a time to rejoice, you know. My same-sex attraction uh, left me that night in the hospital. 
that afternoon of Easter Sunday, I started uh, getting stronger. I was becoming less and less dependent on oxygen. So they saw that my lungs were getting stronger. In fact, by the time doctors released Mark a few weeks later, they said his HIV was undetectable. Now at home, Mark surrendered his life to Jesus Christ. And I just started weeping and crying out to the Lord and just saying, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for all that I've done. I want to be in full relationship with you, Lord. And I just felt this peace come over me. And I felt that that moment, that was it. Mark has since married and works for a missions organization in Florida. His HIV is still undetectable and has been ever since that Easter Sunday years ago. It is a day of remembrance. It is a day of uh, uh, exclamation and joy and thankfulness for him bringing us out of so much. And the cross is there for anyone. Anyone. It doesn't matter what kind of sin it is. The cross is where you lay it. And the cross is there for you. This saying is true. It's worthy of all acceptance. Jesus Christ came to save sinners of whom I am chief. When you understand that, it's for you. You have never gone too far from his love. Nothing can separate you from him. He wants to be with you for all eternity. He is your father. You are his child. He loves you infinitely. He wants nothing more than for you to finally come to realize the greatness of his love, the greatness of his power. That's what he wants. He doesn't want to condemn you. He doesn't want to judge you. He doesn't want anything like that. All he wants is for you to turn and to say, Jesus, I'm here. Now for Mark, here he is coded. He's having visions of hell. He's condemning himself. He's, he's, he's lost. But he says one word. He cries out one word. Jesus. And in that, suddenly everything changes. And he finds himself back in his body. He comes back to life. He's virus free. His lungs start to work on their own. He... He's able to come out of the hospital. The sins of his past are forgotten and wiped away. And he now has new life. He has hope. He has a pur purpose. He has a future. All because he cried out one word, Jesus. Now the Bible says that all who do that, everyone, all who call on the name of the Lord, shall be saved. There's no, there, there's no ritual you have to go through. There's, there's nothing that you can do to perfect yourself. You don't have to do any of that. Jesus has done it all for you. And that's the miracle of salvation. That's the good news. All you have to do is call his name. What a great salvation. What a wonderful Savior. And on this Good Friday, all we have to do is remember his death and his crucifixion, his blood, and say, that's for me. I need that. Jesus, would you save me? Would you forgive me? Would you be my Messiah? Would you be my Savior? If this is for you, just bow your head with me. Let's pray a very simple prayer and let Jesus do all the rest. Pray with me. Jesus, that's right, call his name. Call it out loud, Jesus. I come to you, and Jesus, I need you in my life. I open the door of my heart. I ask that you come in. I ask that you forgive me. I ask that you set me free from every compulsion to sin. That you would renew me and give me a new heart and a new spirit. 
Jesus, if you do this for me, I want to follow you all the days of my life. Hear my prayer. Come into my heart, for I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed with me, let somebody know. Give us a call, one 800 700